Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Video bandwidth for the Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Audio bandwidth for the Gizwiz is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it free at winamp.com slash Android. It's time for the Gizwiz with Matt's maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1,398, recorded January 5th, 2013. CES Preview. The Gizwiz is brought to you by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash gizwiz. And now, get ready for Dick. Let me see here. Got my plane tickets to Las Vegas? Check. Got a rental car for Las Vegas? Check. Got a hotel room? Got a hotel? Oh. Uh Oh, <laughs> CES time! It's the same dumb show with D Oh, when I do that, it stops it. Okay, <laughs> I've learned my lesson. I won't be doing that again. Let's try again, shall we? <laughs> yes. The same dumb joke. I'm getting ready for CES. I got my plane ticket here. I got my rental car reservation here. I got my ho hotel... Oh. Uh Oh. oh, it's the same dumb show with Dickie D and Leo Laporte on Twit TV. It's time for the Gizmos because gadgets are his business. They've got a Gizmo sickness, geek disease. Geek Under disease! Rows and rows of USBs, growing, growing LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, time for the Gizwiz! a special edition, the CES edition. Hello, Dickie D. Leo, how are you? Are you excited? I am. I just hope I can stay on your, uh, the floor of your hotel room. Oh, you know, uh, you'll be the eighth person. <laughs> it's, you know, I got to tell you, it, 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 while, while every other trade show in the world is just dying on the vine, CES yes. continues to grow. 150,000 people we're expecting, or they're expecting this year. Uh, we've been trying to get a car. Can't get a car. We've been trying. We've lucky. We booked. The we did book the hotels earlier. Uh, it is. It is just as difficult yes, as ever. And now it's it's back to two different convention centers. You know, for a while, uh, it had gotten shrunken down so that everything fit in the Las Vegas Convention Center. Now it's back to two convention. Where's centers. Where's the other one? Uh, it's the uh, Venetian. I think it's the. Uh, oh, I think because the they sands. Just, they demolished the sands. Yes. The sands is gone. Yes. So the sands is gone. <laughs> so we can't go. We uh, we can't all go to the sands, which used to be great because it was kind of near the convention center. Now we have to go all the way back to the strip. And where where are where did you end up? I'm on. I'm at, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm at the Rio. Oh, uh, at the what? The Rio. The Rio. Oh, now I heard the Rio is very nice, but it's even off the strip. It's off right? the strip. It's uh, on the yeah. other side of the strip from the Vegas Convention Center. Yeah. So, in effect, we're as far as you can be and still be in Las Vegas. Yeah. Well, the good thing is it's only a mile from the Brick House. Yes. So that part's good. <laughs> we, don't, yeah. we don't actually fly. No, you don't. No, yeah. you don't. Yeah. Now, the Rio is very nice. The reason I'm going to be there is because I'm going out uh, early to do the uh, New Media Expo uh, oh. and Blog World. So that's... Oh, Blog World. Okay. What, you don't know what the new media... You're in new media. You don't know what the new media expo is? No, I know what it is. But, but you've I, heard of Blog World. Yeah, I've heard of Blog World. All right, well, I guess I'll call it Blog World. It's presented by Blog World, but it's really the NMX, where content meets commerce. Oh, wow. Whoa. So uh, that's going to be fun. January 6th through 8th at the Rio. Now, oh, okay. if you don't... You know, it's $87 for the pass, but you can get 20% off... If you go to techguylabs.com, we've got a 20% off. You know, I could just tell you. There's a code. Let me just see. I, I, you don't have to go to techguylabs.com. There's nothing to click. It's just a special code. Where is it? It's gone. Where is it? What's the code, Glenn? Glenn, what's the frequency? Hi, everybody. <laughs> I, I don't know. Somebody's coming now. Somebody's running. 
Running, running. They're running. And now the they stopped. Is... Now they're running again. Now they've stopped again. Chat room, Leo 20. Thank you. Or no, they, they have a question mark after that. Oh, oh I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. No one knows. By the end of this show, keep listening. I will have the code. It's something 20. Maybe is it twit 20? I can't remember. It's something 20. And so you're hosting a show there? So what am I doing there? I don't know. I'm going to show up. I am giving the keynote. Pre so uh, I think at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock, <laughs> I'm really ill prepared for this. <laughs> Somebody's going to take me and put me on wheels and roll me into the place. And then at 1 o'clock, I think we're having a meet and greet. And then I'm giving a keynote at 4 p.m. This is Monday? Monday. Monday, okay. And then at, at uh, shortly after the keynote, I have to rush over to the podcast awards. Because the uh, podcast, I'm going to be hosting the... I'm not winning any awards, but I'm hosting the show. Uh, that was my wait a minute. If my consolation is, prize. Right. If one is hosting them, it's very easy to I win I think them. I've won. Yes. Yeah, Oh, I absolutely. see what you're saying. I just tear up in the envelope and don't read what's on it. I say, and it's, the winner is me. There you go. There you go. Do you think if I did that every single time that that, that would wear thin as a joke? Uh, not to the people who you, you uh, employ. <laughs> to everybody else. And the winner perhaps. is me. I'm just going to do no, that. No, I think on every you should. Award. No, you should say the winner is Mr. Leo Laporte. Is he here? I'll put the award aside for him. Yes. So that you, yes. you know you vary it. L Laporte. <laughs> oh, I'll put this aside for him. Mr. Laporte's not here to accept, but I'll accept on his behalf. There you go. There you go. What is and it, that way, people don't catch on. The offer code, I've been told, is Leo20 or oh, okay. Twit20. So both of them are okay. It's on our blog post. It's on, okay. If you go to inside.twit.tv, you can also find it there. Uh, in fact, the whole schedule is there. So that's going to be fun. So uh, then Tuesday, CES, the show floor opens. Yes. And I will be uh, I will be uh, at the Ford stage for most of the day, interviewing many of the great big names uh, at Ford who are coming by. Um, and then we're doing a panel on the connected automobile. I've got Paul Mascarenas, the CTO of Ford, John Ellis, Ford's global technologist of connected services, mm. and the panel will have the CEO of Roku, the CMO of Stitcher, and the associate director of Sharp's smart TV platform. Uh, Vishnu Rao. So we're going to talk about connected devices. Um, some of this will be available uh, on demand via Stitcher. I don't know if we're streaming this live or not. My keynote will be streamed, by the way. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. So 1 p.m. meet and greet, Podcast Pavilion, booth 407. 4 p.m. the keynote, that's going to be streamed, I think. 6.30 p.m. the Podcast Awards, I believe we'll stream that. And uh, and then if I can, I'm going to try to wander the show floor a little bit. Maybe I'll bring my, uh, I'll bring a flip cam with me. And, and oh, that's good. I'm going to have my pivot head glasses. <laughs> Are you uh, going to wear? Actually, I have I have a pair of pivot heads. I could wear those. They're really easy to use. And then so people don't know plan. you're interviewing them. They just think you have ugly glasses. Oh well, they're not great for interviewing because the mic is really directed toward you, so you can narrate what you're seeing. Oh. But for walking around and just picking up a device that, you know, you can't take home with you or they can't ship you really soon, oh. just hold it in front of your eyes and talk about it and get a little Maybe video. that's clip. what I'll do is I, I will I'll wear the glasses, record my point of view, and also hold up my phone and record, uh, you know, an interview. Oh, there you go. And then, there and then we can intercut go. back and forth. Whoa. Pretty fancy. Whoa. Pretty fancy, huh? That is fancy smancy. So you're going to be there. What do you do? You're going to be doing... Oh, okay. <clears throat> uh, so I'm flying in tomorrow. Padre's doing an hour special tomorrow at uh, CES Unveiled. Yeah, we know he's driving there because we actually have the Padre cam. Is he back up again, Father yeah. Cam? 67 miles an hour going down I-5. He's slowed down considerably now that he knows we're watching him. <laughs> um, so he's driving to Vegas. He'll be there in six hours and 38 minutes, it says. on Glim He's using Glimps. I love Glimps. We talked about Glimps before, right? You sent uh, a text message saying, I'm on my way. Here's a map. And oh, it's a real-time no, map of his progress. Oh, this is great. Isn't that neat? Yeah. He's stopping at every church, I noticed. <laughs> 
He's saying, bless me, Far, for yeah. I have driven too fast. <laughs> <laughs> for I have speeded. <laughs> for I, bless me, Father, for I have speeded. Um, so we got the Padre cam. He's on his way. He's going to do CES, what is it called? Unveiled. Unzipped? Uh, unveiled. unveiled. That's a different <laughs> no, trade no, show. No. Okay. That's a totally <laughs> different. No, and that trade show is now a totally different week. They moved the week. I'm disappointed because that was. The uh, Adult Entertainment yeah. Uh, Expo. Yeah. yeah, that's a different week now. So you can't really combine the two. No, you cannot. Uh, uh, so he's going to do an hour special from that. That'll be Sunday night. We'll get that. We hope we'll get that on the air uh, Monday. We're kind of, okay. Don't tell anybody, but I have. I'm not super confident of this, because what we're going to do is going to shoot this right, and then we yes. take the, the, the. It's recorded to digital to cards, right? But it's yeah. like it's like 10 gigabytes an hour, so it's like a ton of stuff, and then we're going to go down to a guy's house and upload it. That should that should work fine, right? Oh, that's good. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> so, anyway, if the upload works, we should have it sometime later that week. And then, okay. uh, and then you're gonna do. Are you doing the, the digital experience or show? Uh, I'm doing two different. I'm doing uh, a one hour special from Pepcom Monday night. That's the digital experience. Digital. Experience. That's the one that wouldn't let me in last year. That is correct. Yeah, that and, is correct. And, you, and you're I'm, sure I'm actually, you're getting in. Uh, well, either that or we're bringing uh, mics on very long sticks <laughs> and, a, and a Zoom lens. Can you come to the door? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You can't come in. Moment. Can I stick my microphone through the door, please? Yeah. 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 No, I, I, I have an official uh, invite for that. Yeah. No, I, Jay Bisco says, don't forget to bring your press credentials. That's not how you get in. I, had, I have press credentials. I've always had press credentials. No, that you doesn't have get to you in. You have to you have to make Jim Pepper happy. If you know and what I mean. You do that before you get there. <laughs> it's the only it, he won't accept it, it afterwards. <laughs> it's the only Pepcom event where you cannot register there. You have to pre register. Uh, oh, they do oh they let you show up at other events unregistered. At other events you uh, can register. They're very site. difficult at CES. I wasn't I wasn't even gonna try this year. I've Oh, screw you. I think you could have. Yeah. I think you could have. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, you have some of the other things to do. Then Tuesday night at Showstoppers. I'm pretty much making I'm sure that they don't let you in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are you with that Leo guy? No way. No, no, no. Well, then I, I show my ABC News yeah, yeah. card. My recommendation, don't mention me. Oh, okay, okay. I don't think they like um, me. And then at Showstoppers, I'm going to roam around with Chad and the uh, camera guys and shoot interesting B-roll, which you and I will talk about, and we'll roll that into the show that we do oh, a week from Tuesday. So Showstoppers won't be a special. We'll have that for the next Gizwiz. That is correct. But Pepcom correct. Digital Experience will be a special. Right. Even and if Padre's it's just a pic, even if it's just video of you getting thrown out of the hotel. That that's special. That's yeah, very special. special. And, yeah. <laughs> and then Padre, and Padre will have a special. Gets thrown out, it's even more special. I should explain why that we why we even cover these events. It's not because I have any interest in covering anything Pepcom does, but because there are lots of vendors who give Pepcom lots of money to get to have little booze at these mini mini shows. And so it's a great, you know, this is the only chance you get to see some of these uh, these little little people. Yeah. Also, it, it actually works out great for the press because yeah, if they let at, you in, at, it works at, out at great. C yeah, yeah. <laughs> works out at really CES, good. You go to a you go to a booth and there's three hundred gadgets, and you have to find someone to tell you which the new ones are. And at Showstoppers and Pepcom and CES Unveil, the two or three new products is on the table. There's a PR person there and a company executive there. So in minutes, you can find out <clears throat> what's new for each company it's, as you walk It's away. limited, though. There's how many people are there at, a, at one of these events? Uh, probably 50 to 60 tables at so, CES. So these are companies that either don't have a booth at CES or want the additional attention. So they spend ten dollars to $15,000 extra to have this access to the press. And then I don't get let in. I'm not bitter. I just want to point out. Oh no, no, no! That That's we're being thing about this. extremely generous by covering this event, even though they refused to let me in last year. 
But we're going to do it not because I want to do any favors for this nitwit, but because these companies I feel bad for. They spend a lot of money to get the attention, and so we're going to cover the companies. It's because we want to cover the companies. Yeah, now, absolutely. meanwhile, the next day's event, Showstopper Stephen Leon's great. We can ask him for anything. He's very helpful. You know, he says, whatever you need, Leo, come on in, bring your crews, all of that stuff. And I just don't understand why Jim Pepper is such a dick. Excuse me. <laughs> we'll, we'll bleep that out. Okay, I guess I won't be. <laughs> no, just don't thing. mention me at all, and you're fine. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> just show an. ABC. You know what they did last year, though. I didn't. I, I tweeted they won't let me in, and they get there was a firestorm on the Pepcom uh, Facebook page. They actually closed the account. Oh, really? Because they didn't want anybody to mention this. Oh, it's unbelievable. Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable. And this isn't the first time this happens. Almost all the time with this guy. I don't know what it is about me. He just doesn't like me, I guess. Yeah. And you say nothing but nice things about him. Now I say year only the best. Year. I've learned <laughs> never, never, ever to slime him. So, no, you'll have a good time there. Do you know who you're going to see? Uh, I have a list of people. Really? That, he provides uh, you with a list, huh? Yeah. Boy, yeah. he treats you like... So I just don't understand. I don't want to walk in cold. <laughs> I just don't understand it. You know, I, maybe I was thinking of getting a costume uh, and going in costume. Oh, and drag. You well, still have that dress? Well, this was, we, we, we were testing the costume out. I actually have some some test shots um, for, for the event. I don't know. I don't yeah, know this if this will fool anybody. Well, you look like a hardworking reporter. <laughs> Is that what it looks like? Who's Heart. been mauled by a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that won't work. No. Mm -hmm. I would just mm -hmm. yeah. I would just keep that for after hours. Well, have a good time at that wonderful event. You know why they don't let people in? Because they spend a lot of money on food and they know that I'm a freeloader and I'll just eat all their food. <laughs> they do have they good do food. have good food. Yeah. Actually all all the seeds. All the uh, CEA, CES events usually have good does food. CE, does CES, the unveiled or unplugged or whatever the first one is, Sundays, do they have food? You know what? They The, the two times I went, they had light hors d'oeuvres, whereas yeah. the other places you can actually go and have a dinner. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, tons and tons of food tables. Oh, man, you walk around prime and prime yeah. rib. And yeah, I, I Somebody told me, I've never been to one, but somebody told me that they had a chocolate fountain one year. They did? Yeah. They did. So CES Unveiled is much lighter than that, but usually usually have to give the press something or they wouldn't show up. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell all the companies uh, why Leo's not there. And uh, let's see, is Padre SJ on his way? Yeah, he's he's going to be there. He'll be there in time for tomorrow night's big event. Oh, so good. We'll okay. Well, that's uh, tomorrow to afternoon. That one is tomorrow four afternoon. to seven. Yep. And then, uh, uh, and then you go, you go uh, to the uh, digital experience on Monday, and Showstoppers on Tuesday, and we'll have that, that is, coverage. Scott Wilkinson is also going to be there, a home theater guy. He's going to be doing his special edition of the Home Theater Geeks, interviewing all the big TV companies. Uh, I know that's not. See, that's too big a deal for you. You don't cover that kind of stuff. No. No. I, although I want to, you know, Westinghouse. <clears throat> For some reason, is coming out with a 4K TV. I saw that. Is that bizarre? A 110-inch LCD. Yeah. Now, I don't and, think and this it's is the same it's West... It's going to be uh, $59. <laughs> I don't think this is the same Westinghouse. Maybe it is. The same Westinghouse as uh, we all know and love, you know, the the, the Disposal maker. They have a... Di they, I think they sold the name... To somebody well, else. Well, they, they they may have because Polaroid, yeah, Polaroid's introducing three cameras yeah. and introducing uh, a video cam that somehow you put yourself in the picture. Maybe it is. And, They're in Orange, California. Yeah. Maybe it's the same Westinghouse. Well, you know, Westinghouse has, has been doing TVs for a fair number of years now, but I never thought they would jump to a 4K unit since they sort of... They were the low-end uh, stuff. Right? Yeah, exactly, the low end of the market. But yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting. And <clears throat> I didn't see many press releases on 3D TV. You and I are the only two people at CES 
who are not thrilled with 3D. Oh, oh I disagree. I don't think, I don't think, really? I, no, in fact, I don't think you're going to see anybody talking about 3D this year. It was a flop. At least in the home, it was a flop this year. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, you get it kind of automatically if you buy it. any of the higher-end TVs. They all have 3D built-in. But, you know, I bought my Panasonic Viera. The, I bought it a uh, GT50, which is one step down from their top of the line. Didn't even, It's 3D. Didn't come with glasses, though. Which tells me they figure... <laughs> Why? Well, no, I they figured they'll get you another for another hundred bucks if you year. want it. If I, you want, them. yeah. And okay. I bet you most consumers figure, oh, we'll save a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, but you know, every year at CES, and they're 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 quite well done. There are a group of TVs brands you never heard of that do 3D, fairly decent 3D without glasses. Yeah, but you can't and move. No, you. Uh, That's called well, you lent no, no, you can't. Oh. It's called lenticular 3D, and it works because it works in one spot. So they, if you remember, Dick, they put little dots on the floor that you have to stand on, and it's no, why that, this is never taken off at home. Because how many people want to sit and not move when they're watching TV? No, uh, that's not why. It's because the dots are a thousand dollars each. <laughs> they're expensive. They're pricey they're expensive. dots. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why the TV's fifty nine dollars. Cause the dots, and you need at least one, <laughs> so you know where to stand. You do. Yeah. No. The, yeah. The, the glasses three glassesless three D is not going to happen. Okay. No. No. They're they're they hurried it here. No, I can tell you. They're only because remember the only way three D works is by having a different picture come into each eye, right? Correct. You have to have because it's okay. simulating. Yeah, okay. Parallax, right? So you have to have two different pictures in each eye, and there's different ways of doing that. There's you, they used to do it with the anaglyph glasses that were different colors, right? Yep. And then yep. In, uh, most home TVs have shutters that alternate in the glasses. That's why you have to charge them. The passive glasses of in the theater use polarization technology, so they have rotated 90 degrees. But all of these technologies are to give different pictures into each eye. Left eye is different from right eye. That's And then your brain puts it together into a single picture with depth. The problem with out doing it without glasses is you have to somehow get a different picture to each eye. So the way lenticular works is kind of like, remember those, I think Mad Magazine probably did a cover with those. Where <coughs> we they, did, yes. You know, Jesus looks yeah. at you and then he's looking away from you as you as you turn the cover. That's lenticular also because the angle, but that's why you have to be in a specific spot because one eye is looking at a slight angle oh, different from the right. other eye and you're getting different pictures. The only other way to do it that I can think of, and if anybody could think of a better way, that's be only other way to do it would be actually have eye tracking technology built into the TV. You'd sit there and say, okay, I see your left eye. Okay, I see your right eye. I am now going to change with some sort wow. of lenses to follow your eyeballs around. That, that won't cost much. <laughs> that's not going to cost much. That's why 3D is not good. I, I was wearing 3D glasses last night. I bought some for my TV. And it, you oh, you're, even yeah. at home, you feel dorky. Don't do you wear 3D glasses over your glasses? Yes, I do. And you love that? Oh no, you feel dorky. But I'll see a 3D movie once a year, so I don't mind it for right. that. That's why but I agree. I, I, I think I do in the, not want a 3D. Exactly, it's different in the theaters because it's an event. Yeah, it's a special yeah. thing. I saw The Hobbit, uh, you know, in IMAX 3D, and it was cool. I saw Hugo in 3D. Yeah, I saw Hugo. Uh, Avatar. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you wouldn't want that every night at home. Yeah. No. Well, anyway. you ain't getting it every night. No, but I do think home. that they're. But the TV manufacturers need to have something to get you back into the stores because they're going bankrupt. So that's why we, you said it. We're going to see 4K, lots of 4K TVs, super yeah. high resolution. <clears throat> All we need is some content, though, because two years ago <laughs> yeah, <there's nothing>. when <laughs> Sonic showed their 4K, it was quite amazing. And I said to the guy, so what kind of content did he, uh, is there? And he said, well, the demo reel that we made. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's one company uh, that uh, ships a 4K TV. You can buy it today at the Sony stores. I think really? It's, yeah, it's ten or $15,000. and But with it, you get a hard drive full of content. It's got, oh, okay. It comes, that's that's the way. Because well, it's the only way. It comes with a media server. It has to uh, because you have to have because uh, <laughs> you can't fit a, a three a four K movie on a D, on a Blu ray. It won't fit. It's too big. You get fifteen minutes on a Blu ray. 
Yeah, so that that's not going to really take off unless it's some um, because even if you could afford the TV, the content's going to be well, exactly wildly expensive. But they're making the content; it's just there's no delivery mechanism right now. Is it twenty five thousand for that Sony? Maybe it is. I know it's more than I could afford. Wow. Yeah, but they're with at least, all the bundles of money you said that's throwing at you. You can't even afford I a twenty five thousand. It's a thirty eight forty by twenty one sixty television set from Sony. Amazing. Feel wow. the beauty. Wow. Feel do they put twenty five thousand dollars? It is. It's a little more expensive than I said it was. Yeah, twenty five. But it's big. It's eighty four yeah. inches. It's a big TV. Sure. Yeah. What's the one you just bought? The I 60? like the Viera at sixty five. The Viera sixty five. Uh, the VT. Everybody says the VT or the GT. The VT is the top of the line. Is the best TV made. They just everybody loves it. Uh, I think we're going to see some very high-res TVs. I'm, but this is why we have you and, and Scott and, uh, and Father uh, Robert Balliser down there to tell us what the hot stuff is. I'm sure well, Sony and I'm, will I'm also looking for junk, so don't forget that. Yeah, hot stuff and um, junk. Hot stuff and junk. Yeah. Well, do you... Uh, do you Now, I think... Now, this is a special episode. I'm not going to do... I've already talked too much, so I'm not going to do a, uh, a Sky Mall gadget oh okay okay yeah because it's different we're going to do a little shorter show than normal and i don't, I don't think so <laughs> i was just gonna say even if even if i just do three gadgets we're already over I think, it's, I think you got me started i apologize i'm gonna oh, shut yeah. up now no don't, that yeah, is yeah. no problem okay. all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about a couple things that i already know now this is this was not uh, it, it'll be the first time for it at CES. It's a Kickstarter uh, starter project that was looking for ten thousand uh, dollars, and it's called Un Bo Bean. They ended up with uh, two hundred and twelve thousand dollars and change. And the idea was, I thought, very <laughs> inspirational. And then I'll, I'll tell it what it is, and then the comment you made has me thinking now. All right, so everywhere we go, we bring charging cables for the iPhone or and, and your Droid or whatever. So the object here is you also usually bring along a stand for your phone. So when you're watching movies or you're shaving and you want to have the phone standing straight up, you, even if you're doing FaceTime, you don't want to sit there holding the phone. So you bring a stand. So the object of this is to take a charging cable, wrap it in steel so that as you charge and sync, you can make a curl, a coil of metal and then hang your phone from it or stand your phone so that your phone stands straight up. And I thought it was a great idea and was planning on bringing it out on the airplane. <clears throat> but then you said you well, should be wary of... I don't of... want to throw cold water on this. No, well, uh, I think it's it's something to be wary of. Uh, it, the, 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 these USB ports, usually they're micro USB or in the case of the iPhone, it's a lightning port. I'd be more worried about the micro USB. If you're resting the weight of the phone on that, doesn't seem like that's gonna, that seems like it's going to be expen uh, you know hard on the charger. Well, yes, <clears throat> you're showing the the phone sort of hanging sideways. So my yeah. guess would be if Upright's I did not it, so bad. it, yes, I was going to say is to use the phone upright with the coil directly under it so that there's as little stress as possible. We've seen these micro USB uh, connections fail just with normal use, so I'm wor I'm yes. a little worried about it. You know, putting a, holding up the phone okay okay well that's an that take that into consideration <laughs> uh when you go to fuse chicken for some bizarre reason the company is at fusechicken.com oh, that's i find that perfectly sensible oh do you oh yes. okay you if i said what's their website you probably would have just immediately right well the yeah. name of the product is un bobine which i guess is french for a bobine <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, so uh, they're, maybe they're not English speakers. Maybe, maybe. So they yeah. have. Now they don't have. They have a thirty-pin connector. They don't have a, a lightning connector. So you'd have. No, to that, there, there is a video on the thing as how to use it by hooking up the uh, converter connector. Right. But they do not have a direct 
iPhone 5 and they cable. Have a mini USB a, and a micro USB. That's that is correct. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and a regular uh, iPhone 4. It, it's, our, and, I see it's on Amazon. I mean, I'm tempted to pick up. It's a cool idea. It's like a gooseneck phone. Yeah. It, it's as really trick looking yeah. on your desk. People would go, whoa. What are whoa, you doing? Whoa. Dude. <laughs> whoa. And there are 30 bucks for two feet and 28 bucks for one foot. Two foot. Wow. Two foot. Yeah. That way you yeah. could use your phone to whap somebody. You could reach, or, reach across your, it, your cubicle. Yeah. You know, you, if you can't get into a press conference, just stretch it out and <gasps> stick it through the door. I need one for CES. Oh, I wish I'd known about this. I could use that as a, almost like a tripod to you, hold the yeah. phone out. Yeah, let me hang on. Let me just. Uh, How, yeah, what does it look like if you if you just like stick the phone straight out? It, does it hold it? It does hold it. Well, yeah. Well, wait a minute. What I'm kind gonna, of phone no, are you to, using? Uh, Galaxy Three. Okay, that's a normal sized phone. That's not particularly heavy or light. It's just normal. Oh, no, it's medium size. Yeah. And I could just stick that in the room. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, let's there see. Let's go. see the connected up there. I am. Yeah. I could have it shipped to the hotel room, somebody said. Maybe I right. Oh, you know what, Leo? It bends a little. If <laughs> yeah, you, if oh, you, great. Hang on, hang on. Da, 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 da. <laughs> if you hold it at the very end. It's kind of like a fly swatter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. Okay, so it bends a little, but it's good. No, that would work. Yeah, there yeah. you go. There I you have go. that. What was that company? that They sent me a bunch of them. Um they make the they make the uh, tripods or the monopods that you you put the microphones on in, in movies, and uh, they make some uh, monopods for phones that you can click your phone onto. So, oh, I think I, I'll bring that. I have to remember to bring that. Yes, for the Pepcom. we did it like two years ago. They came out with yeah. it, to, so that if you were in a crowd, you could put your camera on it. Yeah, and yeah, they're they're actually a well known company. They sent me a bunch of these. I have them somewhere. I gotta find them. It's not Joby, because Joby makes the tiny little the gorilla pods. They make, yeah, they make gorilla pods. They make something yeah. like that. No, this mm -hmm. is a, this is like a movie industry stalwart. They've been around oh, for years. Oh, oh my yeah, word! Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, boy, I wish I could remember the name. I'll have to run over and ask uh, Alex Lindsay. He'll know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Is he in town? Probably not. I noticed no. there are a lot of people next door. I think they're doing some sort of training. So. It was kind oh. of embarrassing because uh, I was dressed in my. My, I was wearing my dress and the makeup and the wig, my costume, right. my disguise for the Pepcom event. Oh, now it's a costume. Well, that's, that's a good cover. <laughs> and uh, they ran a tour through here. So they said, there's Leo Laporte, the uh, founder of the company and uh, the chief twit. And I, Hello, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> it was not good. Yeah. I know. It was a lark. It was a lark. A lark. That's it. I'm yeah. on a lark yeah. right now. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah. Just a little something we do on uh, the day after New Year's. It's just exactly. part of the fun. It's Festivus fun. Festivus Dragus Day. <laughs> uh, it felt good, though, Dick. It felt good. Well, I think I think that you should live out all these fantasies and see which one really <laughs> sticks. <laughs> all right. So uh, the bo Un okay. Bobine from... What fused chicken? Fused chicken. Okay. Ah, oh, you see, it didn't roll off your lips. You, yeah, you, I remembered it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Earlier on, I said, Leah, what do you think Unbo Beans' uh, website is? And you said, you said circuit break a turkey. And I said, well, <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait a minute, I gotta find out what Bo what Bo Bean is in French. Oh, okay. Where's Dennis? Dennis is taking French. Does he speak French? French? Yeah, Dennis. Un, Are you up there? B O B I N E. Let's see. We'll go to Google Translate. Oh, and, good. Uh, yeah, that's what Google Translate's for, man. Un bobine. Un bobine. Un bobine. It is a coil. It's coil in French. Oh. A coil. A coil. Oh, that's really there cool. You, there you go. It's like a bobbin. Un yeah. Bobine. So I don't know where they got the chicken pot from. <laughs> Fused chicken, we don't know. Maybe that's a bad yeah. translation of something else. So uh, what else are you going to be looking for? Oh, uh, Dennis said uh, his his translation is a reel, R-E-E-L. -E so that works, a too. A reel or a coil. Well, that's exactly what that goose yeah, deck yeah, is. Yeah, coil is, yeah. 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 Uh, all right, so um, someone said, oh, Dick, you got to see the node. Uh, they, they wanted to come to MAD. And the node can do, I said, you know, 
can you send me a video of what the note is and, and I'll look for it at CES? So they said, oh, we'll have the inventor send you a video. And so he made a little two and a half minute video. So we're going to, uh, I will go looking to see the node. And this is what, according to the inventor, the node can do. Oh, and that means I probably need to Oh, yes, that's that. yes. <laughs> <laughs> the carefully and prepared. Now, let's go see what the node can do. Is there audio on this? Hi, this is George from Variable Technologies. We make a very sophisticated and unique product called Node. Node is a wireless sensor that works with a smartphone. It augments the sensor from your phone with additional sensors in here. But what's really unique about Node is it's a platform technology in that we have sensor modules that are actually attached one at each end and they're completely interchangeable. So you can attach different types of sensors uh, and combine them to do various functions. So the platform itself uh, is a Bluetooth based platform. It has rechargeable battery with battery life up to about 30 days. And the whole thing charges through a micro USB port. But beyond that, our platform is also quite sophisticated. We, we put in a sophisticated set of motion sensors inside. We call it the set core. Core consists of a accelerometer, magnetometer, and gyroscope. The three pieces of sensors combined creates a very sophisticated motion capture. And so you can use this as a joystick use this for also a motion capture as a controller. And then we have sensor modules at the end. So what kind of sensors you might ask? We have one that's called Clima. Clima is, called, is essentially a weather sensor. It, has, it can measure uh, barometric pressure. Uh, it can tell your elevation level. It tells your ambient light in the environment, as well as humidity and ambient temperature. And it can record the whole thing to stream it directly to your phone. We also have an infrared thermometer called Therma. Therma, it looks at the surface temperature of objects. So you can point this at an object and get its temperature. And so same thing with your uh, various surfaces. It's like a tricorder. You can point your forehead and get your temperature. Wow. Your forehead. We also started offering some uh, newer sensor modules fairly recently. Uh, it's called Chroma. Chroma is a color sensor. It fires white LEDs at a surface and get the reflecting color. And so what you this can is do is so you can cool. say, look at a particular color he, that you like. And I think Home Depot <clears throat> Home Depot is buying this. Digitizes yeah. Into various uh, colors. Yeah. Colors. I hope they make it for Android too. We can even compare this to a different color. And Chroma will tell you how closely these color matches. It will also offer a suite of gas sensors, such as carbon monoxide, chlorine, oh, I could and use a gas sensor. industrial gases. <laughs> and in the future, we'll be offering additional interchangeable sensors to suit whatever your needs are. Beyond that, we also have an open API system where you can create your own software apps in your phone to use this sophisticated piece of equipment for your own application and your own uses. And so for more information, you can go to www.variabletech.com and check it out. Thank you. Okay. Wow, that's so, cool. I want one. I want two. Yeah. <laughs> I need the gas detector. Well, yeah. I, I got one of those. It's called So uh, 149 and then uh, modules will be um, 25 to $75. And the guy told me that they're very close to a deal with Home Depot where you'll use this and come in and you want them to match a color that you bring in exactly and they can mix it by wow. the uh, chroma attachment. Wow, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Those are the kinds uh, of things you look for at CES, right? I mean... Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because everybody's at Sony, everybody's at Panasonic. I'm the only one at the Fuse Chicken booth. You know what? I would like you to find something for me. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I want you... This. I think this is you. Uh, it's not a confused chicken. But I think you'd be... Okay. Uh, it's in. It's in <clears throat> booth... South Hall, booth 26809. 
26809. Yeah, and okay. it, it's, it's a company called NetAtmo, and they're making an urban weather station. I think this is kind of cool. So okay. what you do is you put this out your window, and of course, you know, weather stations tell you the bar barometric pressure and the, you know, yes. the yes. humidity and the temperature, but this also tells you air quality oh, and carbon okay. dioxide levels. So you can you can actually and I would I would it will go to your phone but I would imagine you can also kind of broadcast this and it'd be really cool if these sensors were all over urban areas and you would know kind of what the oh that's air condition yeah. would be all over the place right yeah yeah they sell it uh, for uh, right now uh, I think for the iPhone for 179 bucks but they say they're going to do an Android version soon I think you should get one of these for review okay personal the weather per station from N e t a t m o dot com. The N -E atmo. Okay, South Hall two six eight yeah. oh nine. I'm on it. Does that I... seem kind of cool? <clears throat> yeah, it does. Yeah, it seems like that. That's the kind of thing you would do. And you live in an urban area where that's important, right? It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Do Although you... uh, here it's either filth, less filth. Yeah, just, they need a, <laughs> just two settings. They just need a filth level, filth indicator. <laughs> Is it Jersey or is it Pittsburgh? What is, which is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are we closest to today? Yeah, right. Yeah. No, actually, the, the air in New York is, is getting better. I mean, the Hudson River is, on a sunny day, I can see the propeller on my boat, which is <laughs> saying a lot for the... Uh, it's, it's not even in the water. <laughs> That's very funny. Unbelievable. Good. That's very funny. So, I'm, you know, I get all those emails because, I, you know, once you've ever registered for a, a CES, you're going to get a, a ton of them. Abs <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. No, so. but that sounds good. I will definitely go there, and I did write it down. Yeah. I'm just looking at There's a lot of crappy, cheap tablets. Of course, they always do that. Oh, there are yeah. 90,000 yeah. uh, phone cases. Yeah. And phone holders. I like this. Phone. This is kind of interesting. Dana Leck. You've probably have done stuff from Dana Leck before. I have. Yeah. They're making a wireless card reader. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, the mobile... Mobile, uh, uh, mobile junkie? Mo well, uh, yeah, mobile junkie. How did you? You're good. Be because I get these. I, I, we probably get the same press releases. Yeah. But I remember reading through that and putting it on my list. Yeah, I thought that looked kind of cool. Yeah. I don't. I don't know why you would need it to be wireless, but you know, maybe you don't want to go anywhere near your computer <laughs> or something. I don't know. You want to pull it out of the? I don't know. It seems like a good idea. Yeah, Dane Electric. I remember those. Yeah, Dane so. Electric. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm just I'm going through uh, some of my uh, my emails. Oh, okay. To see if there's anything okay. else. What else? What else are you excited about? Oh, you know, uh, I just found, and this is n not terribly exciting, but I, I thought it was very well designed. Um, let me see the name of the company. Oh, it's called Ventu. V e n t e v, and. They're going to be showing uh, a new line of wall chargers. But what I like about them is they're really nicely designed. You can charge two iPads or iPad, iPhone uh, at the same time. They are 2.1 amps. They <clears throat> they drop down to almost zero, <clears throat> zero voltage once uh, it's charged. And what I like about it is they come with flat, super flat charging cables so that they will not get all wrinkled up in your attache case because they're flat. Uh, and also, it's very funny. They, they, <laughs> it comes in this neat packaging, and it says, our packaging requires no scissors, no knife. It's just <laughs> easy open. So I'm here going, it yeah, look that easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Until I realized, oops, the bottom slides off. Oh. <laughs> I, I know. But they should have an arrow that says open from the open bottom here. because, yeah. you know, you, you think, oh, this just lifts. This just, this is just welded on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you ever clean the, uh, the Disneyland uh, studios there? Um, what year is this? <laughs> I, I do it on even years, so 2014. I'm tempted. What? I'm very, you know, we've all seen the Roomba from iRobot, and I guess iRobot is going to announce a pool, Real, a pool the cleaning. The Roomba could go 
one foot before yeah. it got caught in some case. I know. That's why I'm interested. There's another company, uh, Monowal or something they're called, with the Rydus Hybrid Robot Cleaner. Looks like a Roomba, but it's got, yeah. you could have a, a, a microfiber. It'll mop the floors. It'll suck. It'll blow. It'll do anything that you would you ask of it. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. I you know you think. No, I'll, I'll go by there. I'll go by would there. Would you go by? Because I I agree with you. I think the Roomba. Oh, wow, that's. I think the Roomba is a little bit of a you know a good idea, but it doesn't yeah. it doesn't seem to really do it. And I thought maybe yeah, this if, might do better. Yes, exactly. You know, maybe it's if time. Yeah. Like if you have a loft that's 50 by 100 feet and there's a table in the middle and that's it. <laughs> then it might work. It, it, well, it, nothing's going to clean your Disneyland. There's no clear space at all there. You need some. No. Well, right. no, that's the problem. There's no place to put this unit down. That's the, <laughs> see, that's the problem. Yeah, I don't know. No, yeah. but I'll look at it. I'll look at it. And, it's ideal. Uh, it says for every type of family, dual income families. Families with young children, homes with pets, singles or seniors. That's pretty much everybody. It pretty much is. Oh, wait a minute. No, if you're a single income family, then the wife does the work. So it's okay. You don't need this. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. That's the only thing they left off of here. This well, is okay. it. it, does, so they, no, claim this it is they claim it sucks up allergens. You know, that oh, a good that's, vacuum that's, does that's you know good. helps with that. That's good. Yeah. Oh, and that's neat. If you don't have dirt, it puts dirt down. That's good. Right. Washable that's filter, eco-friendly. Oh wow, yeah. that's good. Enjoy a healthy environment. Yeah, it yeah. looks better than the Roomba. It just looks cooler. It doesn't give a price though, does it? <laughs> of course not. Wait a minute, let's see. No, okay. Usually when they don't have a price, that's a bad sign. So you're you're you're, you're experienced at this stuff. You understand this stuff. Oh um, yeah. yeah. Where to buy? Well, you can buy it. That's a good sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, online at the Mona Lisa store. This is another. I think all the good web names are gone. Four hundred bucks. Oh, all right. That's about the same as the is that Roomba. The same as the Roomba. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like they sell other stuff as well. Um, no, I uh, there there are no more web addresses because I bought last you, remaining you, web address. You got them all. Yeah. yeah no, I actually bought that one. Last remaining <laughs> last, web address. That one. Did com. you buy it? That's good. I like it. it. Yeah. Last remaining web address. Dot com. Dot com. What, what else are you looking for? Um, let's see. That That's what I had for... Oh, you know, um, oh, I already packed my list up. But, um, <laughs> you forgot you were doing the show? No, no, no. I, I What I did is I went through everybody's list, all the press releases, hundreds of them, and I typed them onto a list of things I definitely want to see. Actually, hang on a second. I got it. Wait a minute. Don't go anywhere because I got another robot. The chat room says, okay. "Would you check? Would you check out the Nito? The Nito robot. The Nito robot. Yeah, it okay. knows where it's been and and Anne knows where it hasn't. Oh, okay. It's, now, do we know that these are at CES? Uh, yes, I think Nito is because I just oh, I think okay. I got an email okay. from them too. Let me just check. Hi there. Okay. Hi there. <laughs> Was uh, Courtney uh, doesn't say they're at CES or not, but." Uh, can you hand me that book? Yeah, I wonder if people, you know, it was a Stanford University business plan competition. Self-localizing, multifunctional, floor cleaning robot. I has, like it. Has anybody in the chat room, you, you were talking about it, have you used the Nito? They say it looks like a, a Nintendo N64 with wheels. It does. Looks like you could put a video game in the front there. Yeah, okay. Wow, Web 6698 says they're light years ahead of the competition. They said this isn't just a sweeper. This is sucks. <laughs> it scans, maps, and plans. Don't you dare call it a sweeper. A lot of robot, quote, vacuums are really just sweepers. Not the Neato. It's the most powerful robot vacuum. To I want a Neato. Wow, I will check that out. Price, price point. It, you know what's cool? It has a little docking station that it slides into and automatically charges itself when it's run out of power. Well, uh, they almost all have. Oh, those. they all do that. Okay, it's bagless, yeah. <clears throat> easy scheduling. All floors are covered. It works for uh, carpet as well as uh, hardwood. Hmm. All right. Let's see where to buy. Let's buy one of these. 
Let's see. They got it at Amazon and Best Buy. It, it probably all they're probably all the same price. Two, for, yeah, it's a little more expensive. Four twenty nine. That's for pet owners and allergy sufferers. Three ninety nine for the bat, the regular one. So that's I guess got special filters for a little thirty bucks more. I don't know. I, you see if they're there. You should do all this stuff. I will. I will. You check all the all robots. Right. Okay, so I'm looking for the I'm Watch, the uh, oh, Android Watch. I've tried that; it's crap. Don't be, don't the, waste uh, your time. We reviewed it before you buy. I had it; it's terrible. Oh, okay. But, but yes, uh, the Pebble Watch is going to make its debut there. Okay, that, there's something else to look for. That's the okay. Kickstarter. Well, they're having their uh, announcement there. They don't say what it is. That's the Kickstarter project. If you have any trouble getting in, just tell them Jim Pemper say. No, if you have any trouble, <laughs> if you have any trouble getting in, say I'm I'm here okay. on behalf of Leo Laporte, who was a donor. He he is he was one of you know I I support. It was a Kickstarter project. Their press conference is January 9th at 9 a.m. Uh, at room S228, it's going to be streamed live on GetPebble.com because there's a lot of us who, who donated to the Pebble. This is going to be the okay. Android Watch. This, I think, is going to be the one. If any, oh, of, the, okay. if any of them are the one, this will be the one. And All I actually right. ordered one. So wow. I Yeah, I hope you will uh, go there. You know, it even will. if the story is it doesn't work, that's a huge story because they got, no, I think, 35,000, no, 85,000 supporters on, uh, on uh, Kickstarter. Does it say it's it's only 150 bucks? It's 150 bucks, 150 bucks. But I think you have to have a um, Android device for this to work. I think it or or iPhone, Android or iPhone using. Oh, Bluetooth. okay. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much. That's pretty, yeah. That's pretty that's much pretty that's the universe. Uh, it'll vibrate with uh, incoming calls, emails, and messages. Tells you, uh, well, look at this. This is on a cycle, on a bicycle. You get your speed, your time. You control your music. Wow. It's a runner's watch. It's a golf range finder. And, of course, it'll do you, let you know. Uh, does it do apps? Yeah, it's got, looks like it's got uh, clock apps. No, it's uh, incoming caller ID, email, calendar alerts, Facebook oh, messages, okay. Twitter, good. weather alerts. So, but, but, again, you're tying it to a phone, right? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Load apps using Bluetooth. So it allows you, it does allow you to install a, uh, more apps and it will work with if this then that so that's kind of cool too i'm also looking for new cube the world's smallest loudest mp3 player uh yeah it looks pretty cool yeah so I'll anyway would you out. check that out for me yeah, yeah 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 i'll forward you let me let me just forward you the uh, invitation so you can perfect perfect you can ha add that do you, how do you keep track of this do you have a uh Kind of a special uh, system for this? Do you have a f no. file folder or anything? Ba oh, basically, I just put it in Dropbox. I I boil all the press releases down, put them in a file, put them in Dropbox. Doesn't that make them then... kind of soggy and hard to read? Well, you know what? Whatever I can read is what I see, and what I can't read, I save the time. So it's really it's it, it's a good system when you think about it. All right. As long as you don't think about it too long. <laughs> I'm, a, you know, now I'm kind of feeling bad that I'm not going to CES. Oh, wait a minute, I am uh, going to CES. You are, in a way, you're going. But I'm not going to gonna be like, uh, we're not, you know, we're not going to do the Sky Booth that we did last year. We've done that. That's like be the fourth year we would we would have done this, but it was so expensive. So we just thought we kind of get in, get the story, and get out. Get out, yeah, and yeah. save a bundle. Save a bundle. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's good you're doing it this way. Because then you can weigh to see if you thought, oh, we should have been there and then go again next year. Or you'll say, you know what? We got plenty of coverage, saved a ton of money. Listeners, viewers were happy. So this, this way you can compare this year with last year. So it was a good test. I don't know what this product is, but I think you should check it out. Okay. Um, where science meets sexuality. It's uh, it's going to be, they're going to give a special uh, keynote, 2.10 p.m. January 10th, room N250. Uh, it's a special product. It, they won't even talk about what it is. Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Unless it's an out-and-out -out gadget, I ain't going. 
Well, oh, uh, uh, well. I rarely go to press conferences because right. you spend an hour and a half there and you For find a long out time about, and about one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It'll, be the, it'll be a hot topic if, it's, if it is anything. Well, you know, I'll go there. If they're having sex in the room, I'll go in. <laughs> I, if, I think it's more like, I don't know, you know, because the whole thing now. In fact, we just got a device we're going to review on before you buy that attaches to your iPhone. You put your finger on it. It does your blood oxygen, your your pulse, your, you know, I mean, it does all this stuff from your finger. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more of this kind of stuff. And, yeah, I uh, think Whiting's is doing... Uh, oh, they're doing so many it, things, yeah. Yes, I yeah. know, I know. Yeah. It, it's not from Whiting's, right? No, it's another company. Um, okay. But but I'm just trying to think. I'm, I wonder if there's something that has to do with uh, making love that you, I don't know, some device you put on. I don't, it, maybe not. <laughs> it seems like a... Well, you know, uh, uh, is it Trojan who was there last year with their new vibrators? Yeah, and, they're going to be there. Yeah. Yeah, they're back. They're back. Yeah. Okay. That's they, good. They've invented disposable condoms, which I think is exciting. <laughs> that is good. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to cut down on my cleaning and washing bill a lot. <laughs> um, there are a lot of, I'm look, you know, half the press releases I have are iPhone and iPad cases. They are. I know. So they boring. They really are. That's what Macworld's for. And stands. Exact. And stands. Stands. I don't need a stand. I got a stand. <laughs> um, Casemate. There are a lot of ear earbuds, earphones. Rock form is there. That's my favorite case. Um, Panasonic's going to give a keynote. Oh, you know, it's a fun a fun thing I go to is um, it's called Digital Health, and it's called Thirty Products in an Hour While You Eat. Oh, I and like that. That's it's over a at very Heroes, right? Uh, no, it used to be. Now, now uh, they're doing it in the convention center. Oh. And you, you go in, you pick up a sandwich, bag of chips, some soda, you sit down, and each of 30 companies has two minutes wow. to pitch their product. That's and if you idea. like it, you just write down the name and go up and pick up a press release at the end of the event. So that's a great event for covering a lot of stuff in a very short amount of time. Uh, you know, I'm looking, and, and there's so much Me Too stuff. It's you really. It must be hard for you to go through this and find something interesting. But you got to, right? Because not only do you have to find something for the Gizwiz, but you've got to find stuff for for ABC and. Uh, no, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Polaroid video in video camcorder lets you see yourself in the shot. So I want to see what that's all about. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Boost blocks. Oh, the Lytro, uh, light field the light, camera. The Lytros will be there. That's that ca weird right. camera, yeah. Right. And I think they're coming out with a video version now for the first time where you can shoot uh. video and then focus the part of the video that you really wanted. Oh, I would go go check out Lytros for sure, uh, yeah. Uh, Phosphor is showing new watches. You know, they also use e-ink. I like e-ink. I have to say for a watch, it's kind of cool. Well, anyway, I think there, there's going to be... Yeah, we're, we're, yeah there's we're plenty. We've got plenty to do. we got plenty, plenty to do. do. So uh, do, you, uh, do you have another one, or you want to do the Gadget Warehouse? No, let's do the Gadget Warehouse, and it's a sort of, sort of a combo. You found that other email, right? I do have it right here and sitting in okay. front of me in my lap. Okay, very good. So uh, what you could do is uh, play our letters theme and read the letter part. Oh, we'll start with the letters theme. Uh, the letter, I guess, you want me to read it, Dick, or do you yeah, want to Yeah, why read not? It? Because it's easier. For you, it's easier. I got to work. <laughs> <You> are... <laughs> yeah. yeah, why not you read it, Leo? It'll be easier for me. Leo, uh, you may remember, Dick and Dee and Leo, you may remember me from such episodes as Prank Packs Gifted Twit Bricks, episode 1350, Turn the Table Turkey Feathers, episode 1374, 
or a personally delivered Sky Mall catalog with picks to boot. He came here, uh, Kevin Sears did, in uh, not so long ago, episode 1385. Today, Kevin says, I present you with my first YouTube video, unedited, of course, entitled Memories Across Space and Time. This is a reflection of gadgets that I have worked with in this department many years ago, which came back to greet me during my second tour of duty. I purchased these tools in 1983 only to see them again in my next regeneration in 2005. Not only across time and space, but not as across time, but also space as this office and lab moved from its original location to a newly constructed building on the campus in 2001. Uh, here's a picture of him coming by. It was fun to, fun to meet him. Uh, yeah, that was, a, that was uh, the one-year anniversary, right? Yeah. He's a Doctor Who fan, Mac Doctor Who, and apparently I decided to dress for the occasion. Yeah, yeah. As is your one. As is my one. Oh, but well, this is different. You're uh, you're a man in that shot. <laughs> I'm a man in every shot, Dick. There's nothing. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> no matter how I look, I'm still a man. Oh, he, okay. So that no nose not working on yeah, the body hair. Yeah. Okay. No, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, he did a little. Well, you'll see this in the video, a before and after. But let I shall tell you what. Let's. Let's go to the video. What do you say? Let's do that. Let's, as they say, uh, let's run the tape. Mac across time. Hey, Dickie D and Leo. This is Mac Doctor Who coming to you today <laughs> I like the music as track. Father I do Time. Too. <laughs> Closing out not only the year of 2012, but this cubicle I call home for the past seven years look at that Crazy. my first tour of duty in There's this department iMac. bondi blue was yes. in a adjoining building Steve Jobs from bio. 1983 through 1990 i returned after the gentleman who sat here retired in 2005 at least they think he was retired he could be buried beneath the on my junk. first week of the job <laughs> The fellow technician asked for the meter out of Will's desk <laughs> because it was due for calibration. He knew right where to find it. I hadn't dug through all of Will's stuff yet. And he pulled out this meter. Oh, nice voltmeter. And I said, huh, you won't believe it, but this is my meter from 1983. Wow. How can you tell, he asked. Well, back then, we labeled everything, and and I mean everything. Yeah. Even well, the, even our the... tools had a color code. Blue was my color, along with number 194. A few years later, when we were cleaning out the storeroom, <laughs> I came across... Oh, the it's a fluke, a fluke multimeter, yeah. The fluke, yeah, the fluke But 75. the most amazing find in this old desk was based on I think I'm the picture cry. that I'm I so took sad. in May of 1984 at the dedication Aww. of this new facility. Look at that. My daughter, Bethany, 20 months old, 28 years ago, joined me at the end of the work day for a photo op with her papa, next to the dedication plaque. You might notice that in my pocket, I had a pocket protector <laughs> where I carry two pens. Nothing geeky here. And two screwdrivers. It looks like he's got a USB TARDIS too there. Well, yes. In this very oh, look. desk, he's got, I found one of those screwdrivers. He's got a sonic screwdriver as well. Number oh. 194. It's blue. Hard to read. So there's some really honest so people that years, work there. Yeah, no. you're the first time. Ford didn't want that crap. Seven years. I was just going to say, <laughs> if, if that had been an it's iPad, it would have lasted yeah. a week. He is a Doctor Who fan. Look at all the Doctor Who memorabilia. From many. That's so cool. So is he is he retiring? Is, is that what's going on? No, here? no. He he uh, was there in 1983. He labeled all his tools. Kept and moving around, just and the then hall. somehow got back to the same As desk. There's and, his brick. 
just and like Father his Time. Tools, his his will tools turn are still there after all years. 28 years. This is so. Mac Doctor Who coming to you from the Midwest. Oh. And may your oh, there's a turkey gadget feather. warehouse <laughs> yes. be ever flowing with memories <laughs> of the past. <laughs> Wow, he's, a, he's such a fan of the show. I I, I figured, oh, you know, he'll we'll, we'll run well, but, it. But it's I, very funny. So here's because... the thing I don't understand. So now let me let me show you. By the way, if you want to watch this video uh, in its entirety, Memories Across Time and Space, his YouTube channel is Kevin Sears S E A R S. But and here's also the... there's a link to it uh, on, on my website. on your g get site. But then right. here's the thing that uh, 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 worries me. Yes, because he sent us also before and after pictures. Uh, this is the before picture, and then there's the after picture. It's all gone. I need to read reread this letter. Did he quit? Did he retire? Mm -hmm. No, he went to a different division, and then he ended up back at the same division. But he said, I, uh, "But he's cleaned this all up." Uh, December twenty second. Well, I, he cleaned it up, but I guess he had to leave his tools there. Ah. Since no, no, no. Yeah, I understand. Up. But this was like a You're week right. ago. Oh. <laughs> I think he quit. <laughs> Is he still with us? <laughs> yeah. I'm worried now. <laughs> well, he, they, that, that, that only came on January 2nd, so uh, I'm sure he is. Well, please let us know, Kevin, what's going on from yeah, Eagle, Kevin. Wisconsin. Kevin Sears and, uh, and his newly cleaned cubicle. This is the, <laughs> this is the before picture. Which we saw, you know, in the video, and, yeah. and apparently he's just tidied it up right there. It's twenty-two December night, twenty twelve. Well, when he emailed me on January thirty, he said he's back at the same location, so he must be okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Do what? Oh, he's in the he's in the chat room, Leo. What does he say? What's the deal, he said, Kevin? He said he's back in the same company. He's in another place. He moved on to another position in I the see. same company. So he wanted to make that video before he moved to an another job. Right. Thank God Myra's there to explain. <laughs> <laughs> I hear Myra in the background. Dick, it's all here. <laughs> it's in. He's in the chat room. He just moved down the hall. Well, Doctor Who, I was back Doctor Who. I was all worried. I was all worried. And so uh, we, the, the, the uh, music was setting us. That sounded so sad. I know. I thought, oh, how that, my God, he's dying. A terrible ending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's had, he keeps moving, apparently, or something. Yeah. Yeah. And well, has the same crappy meter. Can't get rid of it. <laughs> that damn fluke keeps coming back <laughs> like a bad multimeter. Gaz Gazelle doesn't want it. Hey, our show today, speaking of Gazelle, is not brought to you by Gazelle, but reminds me that uh, one of our fabulous sponsors, Audible.com. Uh, if you are not yet an Audible member, I'm going to tell you how you can get your first Audible book absolutely free. But first, what book? What book? There's 100,000 Audible mm -hmm. titles. It's hard to narrow it down. There's so many wonderful things. Uh, new Star Wars uh, books just came out, Star Wars Scoundrels. They got some classics. Elijah Wood, Frodo, reads The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Oh, I bet that's good. They do, uh, you know, they have this kind of signature series where they have famous actors uh, narrating classic books. I'm just curious. You don't know about me. Without you have read a book by the name of The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. But that ain't no matter. That'd be fun to hear him do that. He's acting that yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be really cool. See, one way to get kids, by the way, interested in books. My son, who is not a great reader, loves audiobooks. He, I've been pushing this on him for years. I've been an Audible member for 50, 50 years. No, no, since 2001. I was, <laughs> I was seeing Fifty Shades of Grey, and I got distracted. Since 2001, <laughs> for 11 years, and uh, I've been telling him ever since, you should, ought to try these audiobooks. Finally, he did, and he, he, he listens to science books all the time. It's a great way to get a great education. Science and technology, of course, but also fiction, classics and brand new, thrillers, mysteries, Business books, history, I listen to a lot of history, and of course a great collection of science fiction and fantasy uh, books. All of the Middle Earth books, uh, including several versions of The Hobbit. I, uh, you know, they've got uh, 
probably the one you should get is the Rob Inglis. He's reading the book, but they do have some, uh, and he reads also the Lord of the Rings. He does a great job, but they do have some, uh, uh, if you want something a little shorter and quicker, they have a great BBC Four adaptation of The Hobbit from a couple of decades ago that's just fantastic. Uh, I just, I'm a big audio fan. And I, as you know, and I, there's old time radio, there's newspapers and magazines. In fact, with your Audible subscription, uh, you you can even uh, get a, a, a newspaper a delivered, audio newspaper delivered to you every day. I'm a huge fan. I know you will be too. So here's the deal: if you go to audible.com right now, audible.com/slash/gizwiz. Here's the uh, this is the the daily audio digest. Just so this is what you'd hear uh, if you if you had the New York Times in your subscription. Good morning. It's Wednesday, January second, two thousand thirteen, and Audible presents the New York Times Audio Digest. Here's what's on this morning. What a from... great way if you miss the morning paper, but yeah, you're on your commute, you can read the idea. Times. We're well, not just the Times. There's lots and lots of periodicals and magazines and books and so go to audible.com slash Gizwiz. You get a credit. Your first month's free. You're going to be signing up for the gold account. Your uh, first book's free. Cancel at any time. Pay nothing. Uh, but the book is yours to keep forever. However, I don't think you're going to want to cancel because there's so many great books on here. Audible.com slash Gizwiz. Pick a book. Listen. You'll love it. Simon Vance, A Tale of Two Cities. I love Simon Vance. He's one of my favorite narrators. Such a great British voice. Listen. A Tale of Two Cities, a story of the French Revolution by Charles Dickens. I bet you've tried to read this book many times. Let me tell you, this is the this way. This unabridged audio book was produced. Unabridged, so every word's there. And, you, you know, you, these books come alive. Even if they were hard to read as a book, listening to a great reader brings these books to life. Audible.com slash gizwiz give it a try today do you care will you look at phones at all dick while you're there you know i rarely do because you know like you know you you have what a dozen phones yeah i don't know it's yeah, yeah it's a pretty yeah. long list probably there's yeah. more than a dozen so yeah. you know the I don't have enough background to compare phone to phone to phone. So you, I wait till I hear about something really good and I go get it. Like, yes. the, the, well, you're like yeah. a normal person. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, if a Galaxy 4 comes out, I'd certainly be interested to know what rumors are. About it. Check it out. And That's yeah. the rumor that they will announce a Galaxy S4. But I heard they were going to hold off maybe till February uh, for the. For IFA is, or. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. IFA or. Yeah. Yeah. A phone booth on the corner, something. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> well, uh, that was our uh, our warehouse Friday, right? Exactly, and our short show is now an hour and fifteen minutes. Good, I like it. We're really keeping <laughs> them down. That's great. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Um, you're going to get on a plane tomorrow. I'm going to get on a plane uh, tomorrow. Eight, yep, eight thirty a.m. We'll uh, meet. So, in Vegas. are you doing Twit tomorrow night? I am, and right after Twit, I'm running to the airport and flying. You're running. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, what? take a car service. That's just you know, I wouldn't have to leave so early if I didn't have to yeah. run. Yeah, yeah maybe, but yeah. or I could walk, but then I'd nah. have to, yeah take take yeah. too long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I will. Uh, so if I go by the Ford booth anytime Tuesday, Tuesday yeah, I'm gonna be. You wait. know, uh, well, I'll tell you when when to come see me. How about oh, that? okay? Because uh, I think we have it uh, on inside.twit.tv. Uh, I know I'll be on the stage. Uh, on the, at the uh, right here, booth. right on here, 10:30 a.m. That's Paul Mascarenas, the uh, CTO of Ford. Okay. 1 p.m. is John Ellis. So you know, from 11 to 1, I'll probably be going around trying to get some stuff at the booths. Oh, okay. And then 3 p.m. Uh, we're going to do a panel, uh, and I'll be running, uh, probably running out of there after that panel because I have to uh, have to go over to the IAWTV Awards. Wow. Where I am nominated for, uh, I think, best host or something like that. Nominated, but I won't. It's one of those things where, I, you know, I'm up against people like Shira Lazar. I don't have a shot at it. But that'll be fun. Well, yeah. You're not even in the picture. No, well, that's last year's winners. Oh, okay. <laughs> With any luck, I might be in the, the picture next year. I don't know. Oh, okay. okay. I don't know. There's a no nominees in a lot of different categories. 
Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing the podcast awards the night before. This is another one. This one focuses though more on video on the web as opposed to audio. Oh, okay. okay. Um, and I think I'm nominated in best host live. But look who I'm up against. I mean, she's not only Cheryl Lazar from What's Trending, but Mark Keezer and Wade Major from Stupid for Movies, Beth Hoyt from My Damn Channel, and After Buzz TV's So You Think You Can Dance, Kristen Burton, A.J. Gibson. There's not a chance in hell that I'm going to win. But I'm going to go because that would be embarrassing if I won and I weren't there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. I'm voting for you. <laughs> I, you have to be a member of the Academy. I'll join. Okay, would you please? <laughs> this, it might be too late. Maybe for next year. We won oh, okay. last year for Best News Show with uh, TNT won. Oh, great. Yeah, so maybe there's a show. I think yeah. TNT is nominated yeah. again. Um, you, didn't you just win an award a couple of weeks ago? I got a Stitcher Award, yeah. Oh, yeah. Best Tech Podcast, yeah. So, hello. Hello. I'm a wiener. <laughs> anyway, Dick, always a pleasure. Have a great time at CES. I won't uh, thank probably, you. Uh, yeah, come I'll, by I'll... Tuesday, uh, you know, anytime uh, around those times, and I should be there, yeah. saying hi and all oh, that. At least yeah. we'll wave and. Uh... Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna bring. I think I have the KTEL is the name of that company, by the way. The KTEL uh, arm. I put my iPhone on that. And I could stick it in people's faces. And say, what is that? Who are you? Why is this here? And you know, do a Perfect. bunch of them. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So you'll be the guy in drag with the black eye. I am wearing the dress to the award show. Oh, I think so. Oh, yeah. It's a formal thing. And this time I'll use the no-no to shape my legs. <laughs> That'll work. That'll work fine. Thank you, Dickie D. Safe travels. We'll see you next week on The Gizwiz. I'll be here. A weekly daily Gizwiz. A weekly Gizwiz.